Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. Shadows over Innistrad spoiler season has already started, sort of. We've had some reveals here and there, and then some huge spoilers this past weekend. It's basically a mess. Spoilers are just coming out of nowhere. Anyways, since the spoiler season actually starts on Monday, we need to prepare. In this video, we're going to talk about every single Shadows over Innistrad card that's been officially spoiled so far that we care to talk about. Hope you enjoy, and if you do, remember to hit that like button. Let's do this thing. Brain in a jar is two mana for an artifact. You can pay one mana and tap it to put a charge counter on it. Then you may cast an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on the jar without paying its mana cost. You can also pay three, tap it, and remove X charge counters from it to scry X. Looks like we're diving right into some craziness right out of the gate. The jar is a spell version of Aether Vial, it's awesome. Getting to cast your sorcery spells at instant speed? Yes, please, it's amazing. Especially as a control card. Another cool interaction, using split fuse cards. Since you don't have to pay the mana cost of the card you cast, you can actually play split cards with fuse and cast both sides. It's so much value. Big fan of this card already. Tamiyo's Journal is 5 mana for a legendary artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, investigate. Put a colorless clue artifact token onto the battlefield with the ability to pay two of anything and sack it to draw a card. You can also tap the journal and sacrifice three clues to search your library for a card and put that card into your hand. Well, this just became the next commander staple to trump all commander staples. Being able to tutor every three turns that this doesn't get destroyed, sure, put me in, I'll take it. It isn't going to be super competitive in constructed formats or anything, but yeah, Screams Commander, easy analysis there, getting to Duretti already, so good. This next card, oh man. Archangel Avacyn is 3 of anything and 2 white for a 4-4 legendary creature angel with flash flying and vigilance. When she enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. When a non-angel creature you control dies, transform Avacyn at the beginning of the next upkeep. Avacyn the Purifier is a 6-5 a legendary creature angel with flying. When this creature transforms into Avacyn the Purifier, it deals 3 damage to each other creature and each opponent. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay, let's take this one step at a time. Archangel Avacyn is stupidly crazy. 5 mana for a 4-4 four with flying and vigilance is Sarah Angel, straight up. However, we're adding flash and a combat trick to make your creatures indestructible when she enters the battlefield. Gross. Amazing top end for an aggressive deck. Seriously, it's so good. Heaven forbid one of your non-angel creatures dies. Anger of the gods all over the place. She just gives up, throws caution to the wind, and just burns everything. The flavor here is ridiculous. The card's ridiculous. Easily one of the chase mythics in the set. Absolutely bonkers. Big fan. Bygone Bishop is 3 mana for a 2-3 spirit cleric with flying. Whenever you cast a creature spell with converted mana cost 3 or less, investigate. This is an interesting card. It isn't Mentor of the Meek, but I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, to be honest. Clues are nice because they're resilient to board wipe, but this is obviously a card you want in an aggressive strategy. It can be grabbed by Collected Company, which is kind of cool, but those cards aren't cast. Doesn't really matter, though. This could fit into an aggressive shell. Giving white more card draw is weird. I like it, but it's weird. Declaration in Stone is 2 mana for a sorcery, exile target creature, and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. Reminder, investigate means to put a colorless clue artifact token onto the battlefield with the ability to pay 2 of anything and sacrifice the artifact to draw a card. Yes, this is sorcery speed, but I don't give a crap. You're looking at some sweet white removal. You don't see that very often, at least not like this. We're talking actual, legit removal. Granted, they get a token, they still have to pay the cost to sacrifice it, and let's be honest, I'd rather let them do that than stare down a world breaker for any longer than I have to. Love this card. Great in control to stem bleeding, great to answer basically anything. It's a 10-10 for me. Aberrant Researcher is 4 mana for a 3-2 human insect with flying. At the beginning of your upkeep, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. If it's an instant or sorcery card, transform the Researcher. Perfected Form is a 5-4 insect horror with flying. Alright, so this is basically the sequel to Delver of Secrets. Human does research, turns himself into a human insect hybrid, didn't perfect it just yet, so he keeps researching, and boom, becomes a giant insect. Love it oozes flavor. Obviously not broken like the original Delver, but cool as all heck. 
Giraffe's Masterpieces, three of anything, and two blue for a 7-7 seven, seven zombie horror with flying. It gets minus one, minus one for each card in your hand. You can also pay four mana and discard three cards to return the Masterpiece from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Wow, this is basically a zombie version of Gristlebrand. The thing's crazy. Its mana cost is basically useless since I think you're going to try and pitch this to the yard more often than not and just return it to the battlefield that way. While discarding cards is usually bad, this is Innistrad we're talking about. Delirium, Madness, Reanimation, there are plenty of reasons to make your graveyard flush. If there are indeed great rewards for filling your graveyard, the masterpiece becomes pretty good. Thing in the Ice, yes that's the real name, is 2 mana for a 0-4 horror with Defender and it enters the battlefield with 4 ice counters on it. Whenever you cast an instant or a sorcery spell, remove an ice counter from it. Then, if it has no ice counters on it, it transforms into a Woken Horror, a 7-8 Kraken Horror, and when this creature transforms into this, return all non-horror creatures to their owner's hands. Uh, yeah, you know what? Sure, okay, let's print the most ridiculous card ever. Alright, let's take a look at this for a second. 2 mana for a 0-4 is basically all that control has ever really wanted in life, right? We need early blockers, this is a great early blocker. Then once we, you know, play a control deck and cast spells, we just happen into a 7-8? Sure, this is like the biggest blue Tarmogoyf ever. Does it die to removal? Sure, so does Tarmogoyf, your point? Look, I'm not saying this is going to redefine a format, but you gotta admit, this is not only hilarious, but it's everything a control deck wants. Early blocker, late threat, done. Elusive Tormentor is two of anything and two black for a 4-4 Vampire Wizard. It's a weird creature type combination. Anyways, you can pay one of anything and discard a card to transform it into Insidious Mist, a 0-1 Elemental with Hexproof and Indestructible. It can't block and it can't be blocked. Whenever it attacks and isn't blocked, you may pay three mana. If you do, transform it. <laughs> okay, everyone meet the card that's basically immune to removal. In response to anything, just transform it into a hexproof indestructible machine. This is bonkers for limited play, absolutely hysterical, great madness and labeler. Give it an equipment or enchantment or something, and it's a great evasive threat. Also, come on, that flavor. I mean, come on. Card's great, Innistrad's great, everything is great. Air of Falcon Wrath is two mana for a two one vampire. Discard a card and transform the air. Air of the Night is a three two flying vampire berserker. I love this card, I think it's amazing. We're talking about a free madness outlet. There isn't much more you can ask for than that. Granted, you only really get to use it once, it's still free. I think this card is a lot better than players are giving it credit for. Aggro black red deck, madness cards in there, air fits for sure, gotta love those engines. Pick the brain is three mana for a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand, you choose a non-land card from it and exile that card, simple enough. It also has Delirium. If there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, search that player's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name as the exiled card and exile those cards. If you can get Delirium online, which I'm not saying is going to be easy, this card's pretty sweet. The best part about it is that you get to look at their hand before naming a card. That's unlike any of the cards that do this sort of thing. It's like a weird combination of Thoughtseize, Surgical Extraction, Extirpate. It's super weird, I like it. Relentless Dead is 2 black for a 2-2 two -two zombie with menace. When it dies, you may pay 1 black. If you do, return it to its owner's hand. When it dies, you may pay X. If you do, return another target zombie creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. I just, uh, sure, let's just recur our Grey Merchant of Asphodel or our Giraffe's Messenger. Sure, why not? Card stupid, absolute insanity. Risen Executioner is looking better and better, I tell you. Wow. Looks like those zombies from Endless Ranks of the Dead finally got through. Good for them. Card stupid. New Mechanic Time. Farbog Revenant is 3 mana for a 1-3 spirit with lifelink and skulk. This creature can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. I think Skulk is a great way to incorporate a new kind of evasion. Something based on power and toughness is pretty sweet. While this creature isn't all that exciting, the mechanic sure is. Be careful though. Too many good Skulk cards make Doran the Siege Tower players cry happy tears of joy until they die of dehydration, you've been warned. Incorrigible Use is 3 of anything and 2 red for a 4-3 vampire with haste and madness costing 3 mana. If you discard this card, discard it into exile. When you do, cast it for its madness cost or put it into your graveyard. I won't lie, 
Getting to cast a 4-3 with haste for 3 mana? I'll take it. You find yourself a sweet discard engine? Oh wait, you have a sweet discard engine! Air of Falcon Wrath. Boom! Synergy. Drop the air on turn 2. Discard the use to it on turn 3. Play the use, attack for 7. Now that's fast. Wow, those darn use. So incorrigible. Ravenous Bloodseeker is 2 mana for a 1-3 Vampire Berserker. You can discard a card to give it plus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. I like this. I like it a lot. This is another way to get incorrigible use into play, those pesky scamps. Granted, it doesn't have evasion, it's still a free madness enabler. Can't go wrong there. Soul Swallower is 2 of anything and 2 green for a 3-3 worm with trample and delirium. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 4 more card types in your graveyard, put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Swallower. Now this is a sweet late game threat and limited. Everyone's so worried about hitting Delirium, but if you're really far into a game, it won't be that difficult, especially with a set that's obviously focused on using your graveyard to do some serious work. Once that gets online, the beatings are going to hurt. Thank Trample, that mechanic is brutally efficient here. Warp the Landscape is not Evolving Wilds. It isn't. It's not Evolving Wilds. This is what happens when fetch lands rotate. Welcome to the peasant world once again. How far are we fallen? Wow, this video is long. If you made it all the way to the end, leave a comment with a smiley face. You're a real trooper. Anyways, let me know what you think about Shadows Over and Estrad so far. We probably won't get much more until the spoiler season starts next Monday, so get pumped for that. Which cards are your favorites? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't pumped about Thing in the Ice or Avacyn. I can't help it. Those cards are great. Let me know your thoughts. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Shadows Over Innistrad spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This video is sponsored by TCGPlayer.com. It's clear that zombies are coming back. Risen Executioner is definitely on the rise. You can get your copies on TCG Player right now for $6 a piece. Not a zombie fan? No problem. Archangel Avison is already pre-ordering on TCG Player for $23. You want her now and think that's a good price? Click the link in the video and take advantage. It helps the channel out too. It's a win-win.